tell us what we're uh, looking at. We're looking at a 3D point cloud collected with uh, three LIDARs mounted on the vehicle. Uh, it gives you a uh, very high resolution uh, 3D, uh, resol uh, 3D uh, image that has centimeter resolution of the environment. You pick up really everything there is uh, to see. It's a line of sight. Uh, we, si we send uh, nanosecond laser pulses a million a second and we collect a live image of the environment in 3D. You get a full 3D envelope of every object. So for object recognition, there is really virtually no doubt about what you are looking at. Uh, there's vir virtually really no uh, false positives or false negatives. I noticed there's some red lines and then followed by different colors. Yeah, we colored the lo lowest beams red and all the way up to magenta. It's, we have each uh, LiDAR has eight beams. So the lowest one is red, then it got yellow, green, blue, uh, uh, indigo, magenta. So then, uh, there each of those beams is shooting out to a different, uh, a different uh, at a different angle vertically. Yeah. And now, is it hooked up to the driverless system right now, or is it still uh, that part not uh, connected? Yeah, no, it's not. Uh, it's it's the same technology, the same hardware, and the same software will be used in autonomous vehicles. Uh, that capability will be enabled when the world is ready for it, when the regulation allows it, uh, and when the OEMs want to implement it. It's going to be a uh, continuum. Uh, initially, um, a safety system that gives you alarms, then a, uh, an active safety system that uh, acts on your behalf if you don't react fast enough to avoid a collision and ultimately autonomous vehicles. And from what I've seen, uh, you're also looking at uh, very niche applications to begin with, right, as being kind of Indeed. one to uh, Robotics, uh, mining, agriculture, logistics, uh, uh, warehouses, distribution centers, uh, UAVs, uh, really anything th that can benefit from full awareness of what's going on around you with a 300 meter radius can use this technology. Now the processing, is that part of what you do as well? Yes, yes indeed. We do, we do all the hardware, we do all the software, yes. And so from a uh, uh, OEM perspective, like a Mercedes, whoever it might be, uh, is it a huge uh, integration effort for them? It's not. We work very closely with them. It's a partnership. We, we don't have a supplier relationship where we throw things over the wall. We work very closely with them uh, to make sure that uh, the transition is uh, seamless. Oh, the cost, uh, one of the things that impressed me about this is it seems like it's adding a marginal amount, for, especially for a car like this. Indeed. Uh, we're starting at below $1,000 uh, per unit in volume, uh, going to below $100 per unit in volume. Now, when you say per unit, does that mean for an entire car, or is that just... Per unit meaning per, per LiDAR. Okay. One vehicle typically uses uh, two LiDARs, sometimes three. Uh, so, if typically a full system uh, that supports autonomous, uh, an autonomous vehicle would have two LiDARs and uh, a central processor. That, with the software, uh, would be a $2,500 package whereas it used to cost not too long ago $250,000 to make a vehicle autonomous. Wow, that's incredible. I mean, uh, it seems to me that that's a lot less expensive than a lot of other safety features that are mandated. Indeed, indeed. That's exactly the point, right? We, we want to make this technology ubiquitous. And, uh, what, uh, just kind of from a, a chip perspective, you know, what's driving the, the cost reduction? Is it, it because it's a semiconductor? Well, what's driving the te technology down uh, in the gen we have Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3. I can tell you Gen 2 and Gen 3 are solid state uh, with no moving parts, and that's a big part of what's driving the cost down. And so, uh, where, what are you looking at, do you think? Uh, you know, bef Right now, we have a couple little um, uh, external devices on the car itself, but you're right. suggesting that will be integrated. Indeed, in a, an actual uh, installation in a vehicle that you buy, you will never see our sensors. Um, you, you don't want anything that affects the aesthetics or the aerodynamics of a vehicle. So they would be typically hi hiding, say, behind uh, a, an IR transparent bumper. Uh, in this case, for the demo on a vehicle that was not designed for uh, autonomous driving, uh, we have them sitting on the outside. But you will never see them in a real installation. So when do you think uh, we'll see this particular technology uh, in, in cars then? 
Uh, well, you, the technology is ready. Uh, our contract manufacturer is Flextronics. We are ramping up the production. It's up to each uh, manufacturer, each OEM, based on their roadmap to decide uh, when they want to go to market with this technology. This enables safety systems that uh, give you object recognition to, uh, in phase two, uh, active advanced driver systems that can act on your behalf if you don't react fast enough to autonomous vehicles. Uh, it can be used now for safety systems and it, the same hardware and with different software can be used for autonomous vehicles. And the cool thing about this is that it is self-contained, right? So you're not yes. worried about vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communications or anything like that, right? Absolutely, you bet, indeed. Well, I really appreciate the drive here and good luck with your uh, development of this. Uh, thank you, you bet. This is the, the truck here, I guess, and mm -hmm. I saw some people walking right earlier. Yep. Um, and then these <coughs> these lines here are the this is the 300 meter line here. Was that? This is as far as you can see. You know, yeah. uh, it's, it's line of sight, so uh, the laser goes as far okay. and, 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 until it hits a solid object. Yeah, I see. Like that's <coughs> that building there or something, probably. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, that's remarkable.